So I'm going to show you today the five most useful muscle tests for the feet. Um, feet are very important, of course, if you don't have the feet right, nothing above there is going to be right. And what we're going to be looking for is persistent abnormal muscle inhibition. So whereas a lot of chiropractors look for subbies, we're going to be looking for PAMIs. So persistent abnormal muscle inhibition. Now we're going to look for muscle inhibition because that tells us that the messages coming from the anterior motor neuron are inhibited to the muscles of the foot. Um, but we're che So we're checking the output because that leads to instability and sprains and strains. But we're also checking the input because an inhibited muscle doesn't have the firing that it would normally have to stimulate the nervous system. So the five most useful tests, we start with the toe flexors. I like to start with the toe flexors. They have to be strong. They have to take part in, in proprioception for uh, standing and also propulsion for running. And to test the um, toe flexors, what we're going to do is put our fingers underneath the toes and have Tom push down with his toes, so curl his toes under. And then we're going to try and pull those toes into extension. So here into flexion, very simple test. We're just going to try and pull them away. Now they're very strong, or they should be very strong. They shouldn't be able to respond, they shouldn't give way to just finger pressure. We are holding the foot into full plantar flexion with this one. So full plantar flexion and we test for toe flexion. From there we keep the same position with our thumb and we go into toe extension. So we're going to ask the patient to pull his toes right back here and we're going to check this proximal joint first. Uh, pull all, check the proximal joint with our thumb and then we're going to do the same on the other side check the proximal joint there. And then sometimes, if you're really being fussy, you can check the distal joint as well and make sure that the tips of the toes are able to pull back, but sometimes that's just a genetic defect and you can't actually make a change with that one. From here, what you want to do is check the arch. The, the arch here is very important, and you should not be able to break the arch. Obviously, this is uh, what patients are going to use for running and jumping. And what we're going to do is have Tom push his foot down to the floor. I'm going to put my fingers under the ball of his foot, and then I'm going to try and pull that arch up this way. I'm going to try and break the arch here. So he pushes down. and as hard as you like because this should be very strong um, I'm gonna he's gonna push down and I'm gonna try and pull up and I'm pivoting this at the first metatarsal head here so you try and hold support at the first metatarsal head and then pull him out of that position so he's going into full contraction and then you're going to try and take it out of that position we're then going to test tibialis posterior. Tibialis posterior is pushing the foot forward and adducted. So plantar flexed and adducted. Now some people will test inversion but that that makes things a lot more complicated. I find it's better to do full plantar flexion and then adduction that way and then holding the outside of the foot so you're supporting the outside of the ankle here. He pushes down, he pushes across. You're going to try and pull it out of there, push down and push it in. Now this is the muscle that is best for L5, <coughs> excuse me. This is the muscle that is best for L5 nerve root problems. And so if you were looking for nerve root, you may want to test this with the patient sitting. So you sit the patient up, push the foot down and push it into the middle. That should be strong. If it's not, you know you might well have a problem with the L4-5 disc, since this is the L5 nerve root, and push in that way. Okay, and then the last one of the five is Peroneus longus. So full plantar flexion, and then the patient is going to push their foot outwards, out that way. And this one, push it outwards. Now this is the S1 nerve root, so it's the L5-S1 disc. This is the S1 nerve root. And in the afferent input paradigm, we have ways that you can work out 
where the uh, muscle inhibition that you find is actually coming from a foot problem or from a low back problem or something else. So we have uh, protocols that allow you to distinguish where exactly that problem is and how to solve it. So if you'd like to know more about how to muscle test for strength and how to find persistent abnormal muscle, muscle inhibition, you can check out the Afferent Input Paradigm Training. We have six hours of online seminars, live seminars, and if you'd like any more information, it's all available on the afferentinput.org website.